Hey, hello everyone, Jerry Tabot with you with another edition of our military community. And we've got a very special one today. We've got so much information to get into. It's going to deal strictly with veterans and their disability claims. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. A lot of people that tell you they know what's going on. But let's face it, we need to talk to an expert. And I have an expert with me today who is actually the director of veteran services, John Deegans, over at the uh, Veterans Service Office on 11th Street there. John, thanks for coming in today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Let's get right to it. First of all, what is Veteran Services? Veteran Services is a county organization. We work for Bay County and the citizens of Bay County. Uh, there is a Veteran Service Office in every county in the state of Florida. We are not the VA. We are basically out there to serve the local veterans and their families in uh, obtaining the best benefits right. they can from the VA. And I've, I've worked with all of you over there many, many times over the years. And you guys know what to do. You have the answers. And like you told me several years ago, John, don't pay any attention to all these people that know, they think they know what's going on. Talk to the people that are involved with it that help you out. So if I have a disability, or I think I have a disability and I'm a veteran, how do I get started to file a claim? All right, first thing is you wanna call our office, set up an appointment with one of our counselors. I have three counselors on staff. Uh, I am also a counselor, which makes us four, and I have a, a very good senior staff assistant that will help guide them through uh, anyone who wants to file a claim. Generally speaking, we need a copy of your discharge paperwork. Mm -hmm and uh, you come in, we will have a counselor discuss everything with you, get you in our local database here, and uh, send off what's called an intent to file claim. Mm -hmm. What this is, is it allows the veteran or family member up to one year to gather all the information they need to file a successful and fully developed claim to the VA. Now that, and that's one thing that sometimes can be quite overwhelming for somebody is all of these documents first of all I, I don't know if you'd recommend it I always recommend to the people I talk to that are coming and getting out of the service is get a couple of your medical records they're your medical records or they do have them they keep them up where Kansas City or someplace like that but you need a copy of that do you need a medical exam and who if you need one John what type of doctor or what type of uh, physician will be accepted as evidence of a possible claim for you. Okay, so basically when you're uh, dealing with the VA for a service-connected condition, let's say, uh, there's a book, a how-to book that the VA uh, reps have to go by. It's not the law. Right. But it tells them how to look at a claim. Number one, something had to happen during your military service and you have a diagnosis today of, it can be your private medical records uh, from your local uh, physician and you have a, what's called a nexus. It's a connection between the two, what your diagnosis is today and what occurred during the service and how those are connected constantly from the time from service to where you are today. Basically, the VA is looking at something happened and you have residuals of that issue today. Now, one thing too, I know this was done for me, John, when I retired from the service, they actually started the process of where they would automatically, if you had a medical condition that you were being treated for in your records, they automatically sent it to the VA for getting their approval or disapproval. I know when I retired, I came out with a 20% disability. This, this was true years ago. So what we have is, it's called a BDD claim. It's a benefit delivery at discharge. So anyone that is, is expecting to be discharged from the military service, they have a time frame of 180 to 90 days before discharge that they can file their claim. Generally speaking, if they have eight issues or less, they probably will get their, their decision by discharge date. If it's eight issues or more, 
uh, it's probably going to take a little bit longer because the VA looks at what the disability claims are and the issues, and they will set up an examination with a medical physician that's usually a specialist in that field. And uh, then that, that takes a while. And so if you have quite a few issues that you're claiming, it, it's going to take more than just that that right. 90 days to, to All do right, that. let's say, John, that I got all of my information together. Now, I got my medical records, any civilian medical records that I need, anything that I feel is helpful. And I, I bring it into, UK, it, K, into you and say, okay, John, I want to file a disability claim. What is the next step after I come to you with all of these records? How do I file that claim? How do I submit it? Okay, that's what we do for you. We take all of that. Uh, we will scan your documents in. Uh, it goes into our database. We fill out the proper forms to uh, get that into the VA, all of those issues. We will actually do a narrative if necessary as to how that, that claim came about, how, well, how that disability came about, and what your residuals are today. Right. And then we will uh, because we're in a digital format there, uh, we will punch a button and it goes straight to the VA. There's no, no waiting. Uh, it goes into the system within about three to five minutes. It's, it's at Janesville, Wisconsin, which is right. the regional office that gathers all this information from all over the United States. And in about three business days usually, we will see that in the what's called VBMS. It's the Veterans Benefit Management System, which if that counselor is accredited with the service organization that represents them, then we can look in the VA and see their entire claims folder and what's progressing, what we may need to do. And then from then on, it's in the VA's hands. They will order up any examinations necessary and then it progresses through to veterans claims reps to a uh, veterans rating representative and uh, then through the different uh, uh, coaches that approve the rating and eventually we come up with some kind of decision. So it's not a process where you can say okay I submitted my claim today and 30 days I'm going to find out if I have a VA disability <laughs> or not. Not necessarily. Right. Now, I will tell you this. There are some claims that we can put in, and within 30 days, they will make a decision on it. Uh, generally speaking, uh, with a uh, surviving spouse, and we have a veteran that dies of a service-connected condition or is a contributing factor, by the time it gets to the regional office, which is Philadelphia for that, and someone sees it. Now, you got to remember, there's a backlog because right. you've got the entire United States. Four days average from the time a, a reviewer looks at it and makes the decision. So it can be anywhere from there on. But right. generally speaking, on a service-connected condition, <clears throat> it's going to be about six to eight months Okay. Uh, if you have under eight uh, issues that okay. you're, you're checking on. And here's a big question, and it's something that I still don't fully understand. Let's say you get your claim back from the VA, and you've been approved for a, we'll say, 30% disability. But they say on that 30% disability, we're also giving you 40% for your hearing, we're giving you 20% for your back, we're giving you 10% for your arthritis. Well, if I put all that together, that's 100%. How do they come up with the fact if they're giving me four different things that add up to 100%, I'm only getting 30%. It doesn't make sense. Okay, so the VA uh, does what's called combined uh, ratings. In other words, <clears throat> they will start with the highest percentage and they look at not what your disabilities are, to compound that, they look at what your abilities are. Oh. And the VA rates you based on your ability to work, okay? So if you are at 30% and that's your highest rating, over here in the other column says you are now 70% and 
able-bodied. So then the next one is 20%. So they will take 20% of the 70%, not of 100%. Right. Okay, that's 14. So you add the 14 to the 30, and you come up with 44, correct? But 30 and 20 is 50. But because you're under a half a point, right. you are now at 40%. <laughs> see, so it's based on able-bodied. And, and, and that's what's so confusing, and, and hopefully it cleared up some questions on that. Now, I've been approved. At what percentage do I start receiving a VA disability, money-wise, in my bank account? Okay. No matter whether you're reti a retired veteran or you just spent your four years in, uh, you can start. You will start receiving a your VA benefit based on the percentage, and it starts at ten percent. And VA ratings are on 10, 10 numbers. Yes. In other words, 10, 20, 30 right. on up. So, yeah, uh, at 10%. Now, if you are a, uh, a retiree, for example, uh, unless that is a combat-related disability, you will receive an offset of your retirement benefit up to the point at where you are 50% right. service connected or greater and then you fall under what's called concurrent retirement receipt CRDP uh, and at that point you will then receive the 50% or greater okay. amount in addition to your retirement but it still looks kind of freaky on your retirement <laughs> statement exactly exactly <laughs> and that's one of the things I wanted to make sure that I that I cleared up and everything on that now I've been approved for all of this and everything and that's good news now I know that at 50% I'll start getting an actual monetary equivalent what happens when the claim comes back and it says denied Okay. What do I do? And one of the things I want to I want you to bring out right at the very top. There's too many people out there, John, that say, "Okay, my VA disability claim has been denied. I'm going to get a lawyer." To me, that's one of the dumbest things to do. Well, we will point out that yes, you are entitled to have a lawyer represent you. When you do, you cut our office out of the process because we can no longer see what's going exactly. on in your VA file. Also, when you have an attorney, uh, I don't know, it it's basically works the same way as an attorney who represents you in a uh, social security disability hearing. They will, and I'm not saying they all do, because there are some great attorneys out there that can help you. I can give you the names of national right. attorneys that are great, but they can extend that appeal out to the point where you seem like there is nothing going to happen here, and then all of a sudden you get an award and you get a retroactive pay. Right. The attorney is not doing this out of the goodness of their exactly. heart. Exactly. They're going to receive right off the top you don't pay them as a veteran the VA pays them 21 percent so the longer they can draw it out and the exactly. more you can get uh, as a retroactive pay the greater their their sum is that they and, and one of the other things is to clear this up for me John I believe I'm right on this is once you retain that lawyer I as the VA individual that is putting in the claim, I no longer can come and talk to you for advice. I can give you advice, but it's basically not going to help you a bit right. because that attorney is the guy that's going to represent you. Now, I do want to clear one thing up. There is one phase of the appeals process that is the U.S. Court of Veterans Appeals who deals strictly with the law and you must be represented by an attorney for that. 
uh, that is way down the line. Right. If you have exhausted everything, it deals mainly with what the VA did not afford you under the law, right. not necessarily what your right. disability is. All right, so we've got that cleared up about the lawyer. I've been denied a claim, and I come back to you and say, John, help me. What is your steps involved in to resubmit this claim, and what additional evidence or documents are needed to try and support this claim? Okay. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I want to see that rating decision that the VA gave you. <clears throat> In that decision, it's going to tell me what they found, why they denied it, what things were not in your favor, and what you may need to do to be successful with this claim or go to the next level up on the claim. Uh, a lot of times someone will say, look, this did happen to me in the service and I have these problems. But what happens is you are also going for an examination from a physician that may have only seen you for 15 minutes. Exactly. And they will put an opinion in there that yes, this is service connected or no, it possibly isn't. Unfortunately, because the Raiders are so backed up with the VA, they just hired 2,000 new employees to do this kind of work. Uh, they will take shortcuts and look at the opinion of that, uh, that physician. I love that because I love doing appeals because I like to peel it like an onion. You go through piece by piece by piece. Uh, we are in no way, shape, or form attorneys, but this is basically how you have to go about that. And opinions are, are I, I, it just irritates me to see an opinion of a, a medical professional that has interviewed you for 15 minutes and comes up with something that's going to affect you for the rest of your life. Right. Uh, not saying they're all bad. Right. I've seen some great physicians out there that that are good at this, uh, but occasionally, you got to remember, from start to finish through the VA process, you deal with a human factor. Right. And if that doctor left that morning and the dog bit him and the wife says we need to talk this evening you're probably not going to get as good an opinion right. as if she gave him a good kiss and off he went and the dog just right. chirped after him. I mean, it's frustrating for the individuals. And, you know, you know my case very well. It took me five years to get mine upgraded. But I, a lot of people have been talking to me about that, and they say their opinion is is... That's one of the reasons why it's drug out over all this time. They hope either, number one, the veteran dies, or number two, they just say, oh, the heck with it. I'm not going to complete the process. Is there, what is that, how do you dispel that? Okay, some years ago, a few years back, the VA changed the appeals process. Uh, and it went to what's called AMA. Uh, what you were under was the old legacy type of, of appeal. And generally speaking, an appeal under the old legacy form would take up to nine years wow. to get through the system. The AMA has streamlined that. Uh, there are two um, forms that you can use for an appeal. One is a supplemental form and the other one is a fully developed uh, where you don't add any information into. <clears throat> to be successful, um, you must give them new and uh, relevant evidence. The big deal is that on the, uh, the supplemental, it goes back to the VA, who made your decision before. Right. On the one where you don't add any information to, it goes to a special section called the DROC, 
and, and this is made up of decision review officers uh, who have been around and, and they know what they're doing pretty much. And on the form that we do there, uh, you can actually ask for an informal phone call from the, the officer and he will talk to you and there may be some, just some slight thing that can clear that issue up. Both of those are uh, to be adjudicated within 125 days. Now, if you are still not happy with that, you can go before the Board of Veterans' Appeals. And the Board of Veterans' Appeals has three avenues there, uh, of which are the same thing where it's basically, uh, you're not adding any information and let them make the decision on the merits of the, the case. They have to look at it as if no one has ever seen it before. Number two is you're going to add additional evidence to support that appeal. Right. And number three, you're wanting uh, to have an actual interview with the, the right. uh, law judge. So when you get into that, where you have a service organization representing you, they conduct the hearing. And there are two ways that you can have the, the hearing. One is you can go to a VA facility and it'll be a three-way conversation. The, the judge is gonna be in DC. Uh, your representative is probably gonna be at the local regional office in St. Petersburg and you're gonna be at the, the clinic. Or you can do it out of your own home if you have a computer and sit there and you can talk to them. Uh, there's generally two things, maybe well, three things that can happen. You could be flat out denied. You could be granted, of which time it goes back to the VA to figure out what percentage, or it can be remanded back to the VA if the judge says, hey, I see that you need more information from the VA. Right. Uh, and they all always leave you with, I'm going to give you 90 days to submit any additional evidence you might want to support your claim. The, the VA law judges in the Board of Veterans Appeals are great. Uh, I've known about three of them, and they're always out there as advocates for the veterans right. to try and get them what they, they deserve. So things are changing. It's now starting to where they're going a little bit easier on how we have to put these claims and things in. Well, right. let, me, let me point this out to okay. you because I just got an email the other day that uh, right now the uh, Board of Veterans Appeals is working on clearing up all of those older claims, the older appeals that were years old. Right and they are not taking on any of the, the okay. newer stuff unless it's to be expedited that you're over 75, homeless, uh, or low income type of thing, okay. or you have uh, imminent death. Uh, they will expedite those, but they're trying to do those legacy claims. And I think uh, they're in the hundreds left to do so there, there's not a whole lot right but it's still it takes time they got to yes. go through it. and a lot of this stuff they're dealing with you know there's there's so much have changed over that past time and we're going to get into a couple of other things on that but let's say john that okay jerry your appeal was approved you're now going to get a 60 percent disability and i can look at that and say that's great so i'm going to get 60 percent disability under the veterans administrations for the rest of my life. That's not true. No, not There's, necessarily. And I want you to talk about that. That 60% doesn't mean I get it forever. There's a time limit. It's, what, three or five years that if you are not with the same condition, that could get dropped. This is true. <clears throat> there's, generally speaking, there's a 10-year rule and a 20-year rule. So once you have a rating decision, any time within that 10-year period, if the VA sees that there may be an issue, they can sever you. In other words, they can take that completely away. 
any time within 20 years of the effective date of that issue, the VA can reduce you. Anything over 20 years that's been in effect, the VA can't touch. So let's say you have uh, a 60%, the one that really is, comes out to my mind is you have a 60% uh, service-connected condition for a knee and you have a total knee replacement. Well, first off, you're going to get four months of 100% disability pay for convalescence from that knee. Right. <clears throat> because medical science has improved, you're going to be up and running marathons after yeah, that. Right. Well, the VA then will either give you a new examination or automatically reduce you from 60% to 30 percent because you're fixed right but you're not 100 percent fixed you're just sort of fixed right uh, then it's up to you to prove that uh, I, I need to be back at that 60 percent right. because I'm not doing that well yeah and that's that's the thing that's really discouraging about it but above all they need if they have questions or anything John they need to keep in touch with you guys over there because you know what to tell them and what to do sure. and everything and that's so important is the communication a lot of people know the two parts of communication one of them is talking and one is the other one's listening we all like to talk but we don't want to listen we don't want to hear something that we think will make us feel true. bad Very true. so we've got to keep in that I, right. I, I tried to explain to folks that your claims folder is in a box and there's two keys. You own one and the VA owns yes. one. And the VA's too busy to use their key to open it, but the minute you file a claim, your key opens that yep. box and exposes yep. everything. We're starting to run short on time here. We only got about three minutes left. Oh. A lot of great information. I told you you can go quick. But once we have that VA disability and say it's 60, 70% or whatever, what services are available to me that I can get through the VA that I don't have to pay for? Health care. Right. Now, there, there are eight priority groups in health care that you may pay, you may not. Right. Uh, you have, Florida has, has a bunch of different benefits. Uh, all the state parks, you can get in them at no charge, uh, lifetime pass. Uh, depending on what your disability rating is, the state has other things sure. uh, available to you. Uh, tax breaks is a big one too. Tax breaks uh, at 10 percent you get five thousand dollars extra uh, on your homestead exemption. Uh, gosh there's there's a whole lot of oh. stuff out there. But if they check with you you got a full list. Of one thing that bothers me and a lot of other people if you don't have a 100 percent VA disability rating they will not see you in the dental services. Is that going to change? Only if you talk to your congressman. Congress makes that law, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. And and okay, it, it, I'll tell you what it is. It all has to do with the bottom line: money, money, right, money. Right, right. Okay, <laughs> good enough. I'm so all sorry. All right, John, we got a minute and a half left. Give me 45 seconds. What What's the thing that you want to impress right now to the veterans listening about claims? My office is there to help you or any family member with any issue that you have with the VA. All the way from birth to death, we cover it. And that's what's, they've got to go see you. I mean, you're over there in the government center on 11th Street, walk in the front door and go to where the, the security guard sits, just turn to the left and you're that door down on the right. All you gotta do is walk in the office. Best though to call and get an appointment, right? Yes. All right, John, thank you so much for coming in today. You, you have cleared up a lot of stuff. I know it's answered questions, but I know it's brought up other questions too. So thank you so much, John. All right, it's over with again. We've run through another, our military community, but it's something that's very, very important to us. Is the VA medical system, especially when it comes to the claims, and the other portion of it is, and I promise you, I will get something on and we'll talk about that too, is the actual medical things like appointments and why can't I get stuff done here and I, why can't the emergency room do this for me and that. So there's more things to talk about. But if you have any questions, above all, please call an office over there at the Veterans Service Office over in the government complex. 
on 11th Street. So that'll do it for this edition of our military community. I'm Jerry Tabbitt. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.